It was an old federation, a small federation cottage. Um, I think, uh, as people see on the uh, uh, some of the accompanying material, it was um, very small. Uh, it had uh, a front yard that sloped down to the street. I only make that point because the front yard now is uh, raised above the street by uh, uh, ten or so metres. Um, it was a very old-fashioned uh, little cottage, brick, uh, tiled roof. Uh, the, there were two bedrooms at the front, uh, that took up the front. Uh, one of them was Philip and mine. There was an alleged living area at the behind of our bedroom and, uh, and a kitchen and bathroom. And I think the bathroom, yes, it was, it was just a kitchen and bathroom at the very back. It was a very small house. And so, yes, it was, an, it was at that stage still original and he hadn't started work on it. I'm assuming that he w worked in the back of the house first and built what is, is known in the family as a studio because uh, it was where Dad also had a drawing board and uh, so he could work at homes at night uh, out, out of the office of Anchor Mortlock and Woolley. He could work at home at night and work on the weekends. And so it came to be dubbed a studio. And it was a flat-roofed... Uh, modernist structure which also had an, added an extra bedroom and an allegedly, when I say allegedly, a mo then modern bathroom to the, uh, to the old house. Uh, it was uh, flat roofed, uh, probably influenced by Sid Anchor at the time, it was uh, painted, uh, the uprights and horizontals were painted white, uh, big glass sliding doors opening out onto a courtyard uh, which was the backyard. Uh, which Dad himself paved, and the, you'll see that in the photos. Um, Dad paved uh, the ceiling. The roof was um, bitumen, uh, which my father um, has apologised to all his clients, including himself. It was later changed to colour bond because it leaked. <laughs> Water pooled, and it found its way in. And uh, this brilliant building material that they loved, uh, they got rid of. The original uh, studio was. Uh, uh, the walls were corkboard, um, a type of corkboard, uh, I can't think of the name of it, it was a type of brown corkboard um, which in later years was replaced by uh, plywood walls. No, I have very strong memories of um, how different our house was because if I was brought home from a birthday party, say by uh, another parent, they'd uh, look at this, because uh, as I say, Dad took this uh, Federation suburban house with a, a, a yard that sloped, at, like all the yards, sloped down to the street. Um, I think it may have a carport or a place to park. And he built a large retaining wall, um, which housed a, a single car garage as well, and uh, then stairs uh, leading up to the house, and filled it all in. And so suddenly the front yard was, uh, as I say, three metres from the height of the street, uh, from the street. And uh, uh, so people arrived and looked and thought, what, what, what is this wall? There was this great big white wall uh, uh, staring with, with, a metal, with a metal gate, uh, which people just say it looks like the gate of a jail. It was a big um, metal uh, uh, full length, door length, uh, uh, door length metal um, uh, gate. Uh, the house was modernist by that stage in its exterior, except for the roof, which was the original tiled, uh, sloping tiled roof, but it had become, uh, had modern lines. Uh, uh, and it looked very different until a series of architects started moving into Berner Street and they all started doing the same thing. And uh, uh, Berner Street became known as Architects Hollow um, as these architects all moved in and all mimicked what Dad had done. Uh, at the very least, they all mimicked what Dad had done and built retaining walls and uh, created a brand new uh, footpath or uh, play area, front yard area, three metres off the street. This was, modernism was only just being introduced in Australia. Uh, uh, Sid Anker was uh, one of the, uh, the great proponents of modernism and Dad had joined his firm and, uh, and become uh, of a similar mind. And so uh, it was, I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember. I remember the Fosters lived on one side and their house remained for, uh, I think, 15 years, an old uh, liver-bricked uh, suburban house with the lawn sloping down. Um, uh, to the, to the group, to, down to the uh, edge and the neighbours on the other side who won the lottery and uh, promptly moved. Um, they, uh, uh, they, their house was the same, except Federation, uh, 
Uh, this is where John and Judith Ambler ended up living, uh, Federation House with the lawn sloping down. So it was kind of like Dad's house was like, kind of like this big white tooth and every, there, were, there were no teeth on, it, on either side. The sense of my own house being different was very early because I'd go and visit, my, I went to Camaray Public, uh, Public School and I'd visit friends and their houses were small cottages like ours once was. They were dark, uh, there were small, you know, small windows, they were quite dark, they were cramped uh, and small. Our house was light, uh, I was very aware that we had a very, all, the living room was light all day because of the windows at the front, the windows at the back, uh, the studio was light because of this vast expanse of light, uh, glass, and um, so that uh, very early age I realised it was different. Um, Growing up the son of an architect like Dad, who was at the forefront of modernism, uh, we would go to Sid Anker's house for barbecues, and I'd see this, you know, recognise uh, even as a young man, a young boy, that his house was similar to ours, but the one next door was similar to our, our neighbours. Um, it was much later in the years that I became uh, interested in architecture and, uh, and obviously interested in Dad's career, which was quite extraordinary and. Uh, and now I recognise modernism for what it was. But what I, as I say, I think the best memory I had, best thing I can say is as a child I re recognised that we were in a, uh, there was light, there was space, and uh, uh, it was a pleasant place, to, it wasn't a, cla a claustrophobic place to live. His work life balance was um, uh, nearly all work. He worked on weekends, uh, he worked at nights, uh, there was just a lot of work that the firm had and they needed the work to pay for the house they bought in Vernon Street. I will say that the family history goes that they bought the house in Vernon Street, Camaray, saying one day when, we're, uh, we're, when I'm successful we'll move, we'll move to Mossman. The good news for North Sydney is they, he was successful, he could have moved to Mossman, he loved Camaray. He also worked on, not all weekend, but he'd work Saturday morning and he'd take us boys uh, into the office in Ridge Street, no, I lied, in Mount Street, uh, it was the offices were then, uh, in Mount Street, North Sydney, and we would go into the offices and he'd set us up at a drawing board and we'd play architects. One of the things I suppose Dad changed his attitude somewhat to modern architecture is, uh, as, he, as he went on, and one of the things he said to me was that uh, when he started modern architects, uh, they truly believed that they, could, uh, they were going to shape the way people lived and uh, they changed their lives. They, he said we were so arrogant we thought we were going to remake the world and suddenly he realised no we're just architects making people homes and we should make them homes. And our place was different to a lot of the architects homes we visited probably through my mother's influence as well in that um, it was uh, decorated, it might have had a Queen Anne chair uh, alongside a, a Danish uh, coffee table. Um, there was uh, the couch might have been a Danish uh, uh, leather, um, low, low Danish style modern couch, um, but there were two uh, not velvet, I can't think of the name of the material, velvet looking material armchairs next to it. Um, so there was a lot of knickknacks. It was uh, Dad suddenly realised the idea of uh, architects when they had their houses photographed, they sweep out all the people's um, belongings and put their own furniture in and so on. Again, he came to realise, or came to think himself, this is our own foolishness, this is their home, um, I have designed them a home and it should be uh, uh, photographed as their home. So uh, if they have uh, uh, you know, magazines or not the right books on their coffee table, then so be it. Um, which was heresy in those days, other architects were shocked. It was very warm and people often said when they walked in it was very warm, it was very enjoyable, there were lots of different things to look at, whether it be modern art or modern furniture or old furniture and it all worked, it all worked well.